What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here with another episode of Records and Ramblings. Before we get into the records, let's do a little bit of rambling. First off, sorry it's been so long since I've done a video. I know a bunch of you are probably thinking that I completely abandoned this channel. Um, no, that's not the case. I have just been insanely busy as of late. Uh, I just haven't even had the time to even stop and think about doing a video. Which is part of the reason why I have paused my Patreon. For those of you that didn't see the message on Patreon, yeah, man, uh, it just, it would be like a month before I would get y'all the product uh, or the video or whatever that y'all had paid for. And I just didn't, I didn't like that, man. It wasn't a good feeling and I, I just, I felt bad taking any of y'all's money. So I put a pause on that. Uh, maybe once things start to slow down and I actually have the time uh, to devote to making sure the Patreon stuff is upkept, uh, I will start that back up. But for right now, Patreon is closed. Um, but thank you so much. I love every one of y'all who have contributed. You have no idea uh, how much uh, that has helped me with this channel, with building it, with maintaining it, all that good stuff. But yeah, I just can't take your money anymore and not give you all the product that you're paying for. So yeah, it's been like a month since I've done any videos and the last ones I did uh, were on my trip to Norway and my trip to Spain. So if you've not watched those videos, make sure you go watch those as soon as you're done with this one. But what we're gonna be discussing today is the records that I picked up when I was in Norway and Spain. So yeah, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with what I picked up in Norway and the only record store that I went to in Norway was Nesblad. So yeah, let's, let's, let's get into that. First record I'm gonna show you, this is Conflict with the Ungovernable Force Standard Issue 82 to 87. Um, yeah, so I already had the, uh, the 88 to 94 comp, so I was pretty happy to find this. You know, not that it's rare or anything, I just not gotten around to picking it up. But, um, but yeah, Conflict is an old anarcho-punk band from London that I love. I've been really, really getting into this kind of shit lately. Uh, it's making me want to get a mohawk and not take a shower for like a month, get a dog, you know, uh, sew a bunch of patches on my pants, drink malt liquor, all that good shit. But uh, yeah, this band is absolutely fucking great. Um, they were interesting because they they had your your more standard, straightforward punk songs, but they also had um, some punk songs that were kind of experimental, you know, kind of in that crass area. But, um, but yeah, they're definitely a band that got better and better in the later years, um, at, at least as, as far as my opinion goes. Uh, records on black won't bother showing you that. But yeah, I've been listening to this stuff a lot lately, so yeah, I was really happy to pick that up. Also at Nesplod, uh, I picked this up, and I'm actually surprised I didn't already have this, but this is Flagellator with uh, Channeling the Asheron. Um, this is one of Akhenaten's bands, Akhenaten from Judas Iscariot, um, and this band is far more riffy and thrashy um, then there's other stuff. You can definitely hear some some classic destruction on this album. Records on Black won't bother showing you that. But yeah, there's also some very clear black metal elements in here. Um, a couple of riffs could be pulled straight from a Judas Iscariot album, but yeah. Um, have I already shown the back? Maybe, maybe not. Um, anyways, but yeah, the, uh, it's mostly just an old school thrash album. Uh, as you can see, the cover is not in the best of shape. Um, it's pretty pretty old record and it's a very flimsy cover. Um, I'm not actually sure if there's supposed to be an insert. I don't think there is, but um, oh god, hold on, there's some funny stuff here on the back. Hold on. Well, speaking of funny, um, there's some writing on here that says, there is no funny or recreational about extreme metal, no matter what style or subgenre. May your ears bleed all to hell. Anyway, this rules. Um, I don't know what this is limited to or if it's limited at all, but um, but yeah, it's a great record. This record I'm gonna show you, this is Maniac Butcher with The Incapable Carrion. Is that what it's called? Yep. I absolutely love that album cover and I love Maniac Butcher. Um, this is actually a demo from 94 that was pressed on a vinyl in 2007. Uh, records on black won't bother showing you that. But yeah, I love Maniac Butcher, so I was stoked to find this. It's not necessarily rare. 
Um, I think it's limited. It's obviously, yeah, it's limited to 699 copies. Um, if you can see that, uh, I have copy 309. 309. Um, so yeah, but it's definitely very rudimentary sounding uh, Maniac Butcher. As most of you know, their first demo was more death metal. Um, this feels like their first kind of foray into black metal. So they were still kind of getting their footing. But um, I think I think this shit is great. And I've always loved that dude there with the fucking curly afro. Curly afros with corpse paint. Um, it's just an endearing thing. You know, you see somebody that looks like that, you just know they're they're a good person. You know, they uh, they always pay their taxes. They tip 20% on every bill. You know, uh, they never allow their dog or cat to go without a feeding. You know, um, and yeah, they always always hold the door open for women when they're entering the supermarket after them. So those are all qualities that I look for with uh, my black metal bands. This next record is a motherfucking grail. I totally flipped my shit when I fucking saw this, y'all. I, I said fucking a lot, and that's oh fucking K. Because I am talking about Psy, Infidel Art. I was actually taken aback when I saw this at Nestplot. I was like, that can't be what I think it is, and it can't be at the price that's on there. This was like, I think this was 80 bucks. And I'm not even gonna say, just go on fucking Discogs and see what people pay for this shit, all right? You'll see why, let me take this OB thing off. Um, you'll see why I, I, I bugged out. But yeah, this was limited to 500 copies. Um, I have copy 128, as you can see. Hopefully you can see right there. There you go, there you go, boy. Um, yeah, I don't love all of Psy's albums, but I like a good amount of them. But I'm really fond of the earlier stuff more than the later stuff. Um, but this is one of the earlier albums. This is like their second one, I believe. And it's unbelievably fucking good, man. Um, the tone and the atmosphere, um, it, it can come off kind of silly to some people, but I think it's, I think this is an immensely creepy album. Oof, this is hard to show here, but um, it's a triple gatefold. Hopefully you can kind of see that. There's lyrics and stuff inside. It has this, I don't even know why the fuck I unfolded this thing, but I already did it, so I'm just gonna show it. But it's a very nice poster here. Um, records are on black, by the way, won't bother showing you that. But yeah, this is an amazing album, you guys. And Psy is an amazing band. Even if I don't like the, the crazier, more proggy stuff they did later, I can't deny how fucking great of a band they are. But this this was probably the, the biggest and best find when I was overseas, okay? I'm so fucking happy to have this. The only other thing I bought was a copy of Dark Thrones Transylvanian Hunger uh on wax signed um not really much to talk about here i don't feel like going in the other room to get it so maybe if i'm not too lazy i'll cut in some video of me showing it but um yeah i already have a copy of this album of course because it's literally in my top five favorite black metal albums of all time but i bought an extra copy uh to frame kind of as like a memento from this trip i normally think framing records is super fucking lame but I justified it since I already had it. And plus, it's signed. So, you know, I, I thought it would be cool to have a signed copy of Dark Thrones Transylvanian Hunger that I bought at Nesblod in Norway. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, Nesblod, amazing store. I fucking loved being there. It was super dope. Um, my only complaint is they don't use stickers that peel off easy. They use those ones that you have to fucking scrape and they end up destroying the cover. So for fuck's sake, man, if you guys own record stores, don't use the stickers that are hard to peel off the covers. Like, God damn it, man. Oh, that shit fucking drives me crazy. But 
All that said, I still love that place, and I would still go back and buy more records, even though they don't use the right fucking stickers. And everyone there was super nice, super friendly, super helpful, so definitely support them so they can afford to buy the right fucking price stickers. So, yeah. All right, so moving on to Madrid. Um, we actually went to a few spots in Madrid, and it wasn't until we stumbled into this random spot called Delia Records that I was actually blown away and bought a gang of shit. Um, the first two records I'm gonna show you are by the same band, which is Muslim Gauze. Uh, for those that aren't aware, they, uh, well he, I don't know, Muslim Gauze is a one-man British electronic musical project that was, it was heavily influenced by Muslim culture as well as the conflicts that were going on, um, especially the whole Free Palestine movement, but I'm not going to get too deep into that here because some people find issue with this for a myriad of reasons. I get both sides, um, but I personally find the entire thing very interesting, but sure, his support of certain groups was, you know, a bit concerning. Um, but again, I, I think it's a very nuanced subject that I'm not prepared to get into here. So, um, but yeah, the first one, this is Muslim Gaza's Mullah Said. Um, this is one of my favorite Muslim Gaz albums, actually. Um, just the inside here. You know, a bit of his stuff is kind of harsh um, and loud, but this one is very ambient uh, with lots of hand drums, beautiful string arrangements, these beautiful vocal samples. Records on Black One Bother showing you that. It's very dark and menacing sounding and also repetitive and hypnotic in the absolute best way possible. But yeah, this is a really relaxing album. I put this on when I'm working or when I'm reading and it really, really, really does the trick. But yeah, this was limited to 500 copies, okay? Um, this was released back in 1998. And um, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm super stoked to have a copy of this. So yeah, Mullah said. And the second Muslim Gaz album I'm gonna show, this is Gun Aramaic Part Two. Um, yeah, this one came out back in 1996, and I love this album as well. This one's interesting though because um, you know it has it has a sort of hip hop flavor to a bit of it, which is really interesting. But it still has that kind of distorted edge. You know, it's really noisy at times. I'm not sure if I just showed you the back twice or not. Whatever. Um, but it still has a pretty uh, digestible sound. Um, if I'm driving around and I'm in the mood to listen to Muslim Gods, this is the album that I would put on. Records on Black won't bother showing you that. And by the way, I <laughs> right when I started doing this video, I realized I don't think I've ever listened to Gun Aramaic 1. So I need to fix that. Um, anyone familiar with Muslim Gods knows he has a shitload of albums. So it's hard to, to, to keep up. But, um, but yeah, this is fantastic stuff. And next record I'm gonna show you this edition of Records and Ramblings. And next record I'm gonna show you this edition of Records and Ramblings. This is Nurse with Wound with the Surveillance Lounge. Now, y'all, I, I love me some Nurse with Wound. Um, some of his albums are a bit kind of wacky and kooky, but others like this one are really relaxing. Um, there, there's spurts of kind of loud, noisy moments, but it's mostly really ambient soundscapes. Um, honestly, it's actually really, really fucking scary to listen to. It's creepy as shit. You know, um, I listen to Nurse With Wound when I am reading or just kind of relaxing, but putting this one on, um, particularly alone at night, yeah, I don't do that shit very often. Records are on black, won't bother showing you that. But yeah, if you're uh, whew, if you're new to Nurse With Wound and you kinda wanna get into them, um, I think this would be a fine place to start. Um, this actually has uh, David Tibet doing uh, voices on here, as well as a couple other weird instruments. But yeah, amazing stuff. Not sure what it's limited to though, so I don't know if you can still find it for a decent price. I believe you can. Um, anyways. Last record I'm going to show in this edition of Records and Ramblings. This is Stephen Stapleton, Christoph Heeman with Painting with Priests. Um, so yeah, Stephen Stapleton is Nurse with Wound. 
And I'm far more familiar with his work than I am with Christoph Heeman, although I do like Christoph Heeman as well. I first heard him on this old World Serpent comp that also had Current 93, had Coil on it, had Michael Cashmore, who shout out to Michael Cashmore, one of the most amazing uh, musicians that ever came from Neo Folk. Um, but yeah, Christoph is an interesting guy. He's been doing this shit since the early 80s, just like the rest of these dudes. Um, I actually saw him perform in Atlanta many, 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 many years ago. Um, and I kind of regret not going up and actually meeting him. Um, but it, eh, you know, it is what it is. Records on Black won't bother showing you that. Um, this is another album that I put on when I'm relaxing. It's a bit more uh, uncomfortable than Surveillance Lounge. Um, there's a bit more beeps and boops. Uh, but I find what these two guys put together, I find it to be incredibly interesting. The fact that they can take all these weird sounds and make something that, uh, cohesive's not the word, but just make something uh, compelling. I just think, I just think it's fascinating. Anyways, all right, so that's it for this edition of Records and Ramblings. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will try to make sure my next video is not, you know, so far away. Um, but yeah, as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace out.